to get the clicker thing right and dazzle you all. Um, I'm here to talk about relationships also in a sense. I'm here to talk about the faces of diversity. We look at people and we instantly tend to look for the differences rather than the similarities. So we, but the thing is, we start out with a clean hard drive. When we're born, we're a genetic blueprint of our parents, but we have none of the belief systems yet. So then we have life. The school we attend, the family we're raised in, the part of the city we live in, all of these things begin to impact us. What happens is we begin judging, okay? First of all, usually we start judging ourselves. The clothes that we compare to other people, the grades, the other sort of thing. Then we begin judging other people. And here in America, we've even learned to enjoy watching other people being judged. Big bucks. Okay? So what are we going to judge them by? You're going to judge them by the way they wear their hair? Whoops. How about their skin color? You know, our skin color really only tells you how close to the equator our original bloodline was. That's all it tells you. We're going to judge each other by what we wear? How about how we wear it? What about how society talks about what, how we wear it? I'm here to tell you there's another way. I'm a professional face reader, and I'm giving you a new vision today from a science that's been around for 3,000 years. Face reading's been around 3,000 years, and in 1950 in California, it was scientifically validated to 92% accuracy. Okay? The face is made up of 144 muscles, and 14 bones. When I'm doing jury consulting, I don't even include body language till the jury's seated because nobody wants to be on the jury. But you can't change the shape of your nostril, the height of your ears, the slant of your forehead just because you've been called to jury duty. Whoops. Okay, so listen up. This is the most important trait when you're meeting new people. The height of the eyebrows. If you do not honor the height of their eyebrows, it's like a circuit breaker. They blow a fuse, the lights are on, nobody's home, they can't hear what you're saying. Now, the higher the eyebrow, the more distance, the more personal space, the more formality a person needs. The lower the eyebrow, the more comfortable they are with informality. If you look at these two people, they're both from Russia. His eyebrows are very low, comfortable with informality, doesn't put on airs. If you look closely, she's removed her eyebrows. <laughs> she's actually drawing them an inch higher, which means she needs even more space, more time to warm up. So she's read as cold and aloof. Now verbal style. Thin lips, concise, direct to the point, and they'd like you to do the same. Full lips, chatty Kathy. They love to hear themselves talk. They want you to listen. If you tell them they talk too much, they're not going to believe you. How about these two people? Either one of them known for their um, formal verbal styles? I don't think so. Now thinking style. So many of your presenters today had the slant back forehead. The slant back forehead is about processing information very quickly. The more the forehead slants back, the more the bottom line direct, give it to me straight, don't bother me with details, talk too slow, give me too many details, my brain's gone and I'm someplace else. Okay? So think of these two people as speedballs. Don't bore them. Keep it moving. On the other hand, these are vertical foreheads. They like information presented sequentially and in logical order, and they don't like to be rushed. If you rush them, the answer's no, or they have to go back and start putting it into order. Going to outgoing decisions. When you can see their whole eyelid, they're direct to the point in the moment, and most of us feel they're a little blunt and rude. The eyelids on the bottom with the covered eyelid, they're actually very discreet, so I'm talking too slow. All of these people are from different countries. They all have the closed eyelid, covered eyelid. These people are all different ages. They have the clear direct eyelid. It has nothing to do with age. 
Um, instinctual self-reliance is the flare of the nostrils. The wider the flare, the more they like to be in charge. Straight back nostrils, the more they like to be part of a team. When you think of these two people, look at the difference in their nostrils. Physical insulation. Now we are looking at the skin. Color of the hair, I mean color of the eyes, skin, the pore, size of the pores, the texture of the hair. The thinner the insulation, more they're going to be susceptible to volume, temperature, sunshine, spices, and emotions. Take that in consideration. The thicker insulation person can let things roll off their back. So today, my vision, my mission in five minutes is to give you a new vision. I want you to go out there with new eyes today and look at the similarities and meet the person halfway. If you're the slant back forehead, slow it down. If you're the vertical, speed it up. Thank you, it's been a pleasure.